like a great work of art. Masonry speaks to a candidate's intuition as well as his intellect. It invites him to contemplate, to question, to marvel. The three degrees lead him beyond the scope of language, using symbols and imagery to achieve a deeper understanding of the fraternity's lessons. For many brothers, it is this imagery, displayed in the art of Masonic education, that unlocks the true meaning of the craft. So at time, uh, Masonic art that created an aha moment for me was when I was doing my first uh, proficiency as an entered apprentice. and. Um, I would go on with my coach and hear him repeat the words of the proficiency and I'd repeat back, but it wasn't until I saw my first floor cloth that I really understood what was going on and um, tracing it in my brain, seeing images compared to just being um, told words what to say really resonated with me in a different way. As Freemasonry spread across Europe and then the world, visual aids helped preserve the fraternity's ritual from lodge to lodge. These pieces were also part of a larger historical context. American Masonic ritual paintings are important in American visual culture in that they're documents of how enlightenment ideas and ideas about rationality were spread through the provinces from uh, international centers like Paris and London. So ideas of the great thinkers in the European centers get transmitted out into the countryside through organizations like Freemasonry and particularly um, using these Masonic artworks as conduits for rational I I ideas. For their historic value and aesthetic impact, many Masonic works are now regarded as treasures of the art world but they sprung from humble beginnings. So the, re the research and artwork I did for my entered apprentice degree was um, early lodges and how they met upstairs from pubs and restaurants and how they had to draw and erase their lodge room every time they met um, to keep it secret. They used a combination of chalk, charcoal and clay, um, which they used directly on the floor and they would mop it up every time. Over time, this became a hassle, so they started to develop floor cloths in which the ritual symbols were painted, and at the end of the meeting, they would just roll up the cloth so they could use it the next time. As visual aids grew more popular, they began to influence the iconography of the ritual and the legacy of the lodges. In the beginning of the 19th century, Jeremy Cross, who was a Masonic lecturer, kind of formalized the Masonic ritual and published a book called The Hieroglyphic Monitor. And he, uh, he employed Amos Doolittle, an engraver from Connecticut, to uh, illustrate this book. And after this, which was published in 1818, the ritual became very standardized. And you started to see new images that hadn't been part of the ritual before, such as the Virgin weeping over the broken column. And so you can date Masonic ritual paintings by whether they include that image or not, because it, before 1818, he didn't have that image. And after that, no painting was uh, up to date if it didn't include that image. The degree charts originally were there, there to prompt the memory of the man presenting and to impress upon the candidate. Uh, manufacturers of those degree charts realized that they could take them and make them into props or three-dimensional items. So rather than a, a two-dimensional chart, they actually created, um, instead of an image of the hourglass, you actually bought and had an hourglass. After the American Civil War, especially in the 1870s through 1910, uh, America entered into what is often called the golden age of fraternal organizations. And hundreds and hundreds of local and national organizations were created, some for immigrants, some for workers, um, for some, many for, for the rising middle class. And each of them had their own ritual degrees. And though while Freemasonry was the oldest and the most prestigious, it still had to compete for membership. And as these new organizations revised and um, adopted their, or their fraternity, their rituals, Freemasonry could not. Um, but it could enhance its presentation from, from no longer just simple tracing boards or degree charts to magic lantern. And Freemasons around the country uh, adopted and accepted most of the new technology. With these changes came controversy. 
Well, floor, floor cloths and tracing boards today are accepted in, in many jurisdictions. Early on, the floor cloths met with some resistance by Grand Lodges and maybe a little bit of controversy. The form of a lodge, which the floor cloth describes, was secret. So you have a permanent representation of a form of a lodge with all the symbols that, well, today we may say, well, they're just only symbols, they're like hieroglyphs. Some believe that they could reveal too much. And so, for instance, the Grand Lodge of Scotland was not too happy with lodges using floor cloths, but had to relent because they were so widespread they couldn't stop the use of them. And so these floor cloths and eventually the tracing boards proliferated all throughout the craft. In California, the Grand Lodge pushed back, issuing a stern ruling in 1938. Leslie Wood, then the Grand Lecturer, was very concerned about these emblematic charts and also the use of slides in the lodge rooms. This was precipitated by a lodge's attempt to exemplify the third degree in film. Now, of course, we have done educational videos about the lectures since, and I believe that that's what that lodge was attempting to do. But it concerned him to such a degree that he decided to ban all uh, visual representations of any slide, map, chart, or picture of any nature showing in part or in whole the secret work of the three degrees of masonry is contrary to the laws of the fraternity and in violation of the obligations of the order. And no lodge in this jurisdiction shall use equipment or in any way shall it or any mason be in possession thereof. Had the ruling taken the idea of secrecy too far? Did such visual aids truly reveal too much? Regardless, California lodges rushed to hide or destroy their degree charts and slides. Many artifacts were lost forever. Those that were lost live on in other ways. Their imagery still visible in the designs of Masonic regalia and in the details of historic buildings. In their stead, California masonry is evolving once again recently producing a new teaching aid for a new generation of candidates. So in 2013, the Grand Lodge of California implemented the Candidate Learning Center, which is an online course whereby the candidate can review the materials given to him by his lodge and take tests or quizzes or games in order to improve his memory of what he experienced and thereby internalize better what he, uh, he has already learned. In a way, it's sort of an online emblematic chart. The Candidate Learning Center uses a very uh, diverse platform by which we can use the traditional artworks and then also videos hyperlinks for websites. So the candidate gets much more than just a pamphlet or much more than just a picture. He gets a total experience. Today, there is little controversy about the use of visual aids in lodge lectures and the value of these pieces in new forms and old endures. Elsewhere in America and Europe, tracing boards, floor cloths, and emblematic charts are still widely used inspiring a new wave of Masonic artists. Tracing boards are a fairly unique uh, type of art. Uh, there are several considerations that you may not have for other kinds of art. For example, uh, with tracing boards, if you're painting a first degree tracing board, you have to make sure that you include all of the uh, symbols and emblems of that degree. You can't leave anything out just because uh, uh, it doesn't really work with your composition. You have to find a way of making it work. Uh, once the drawing is uh, on the uh, canvas itself, then I would actually, once I'm happy with the composition, I would erase it so I can just see the outlines. And then after that, uh, I would begin the painting, which is in oil. Um, that's, that can take several weeks or longer because oil is a slow drying medium. It can take several days to a week for each layer to dry. But I think um, is worthy of uh, mentioning with three craft tracing boards by Lady Frida Harris is that it does embody a 20th century aesthetic and it does embody her personality and her style uh, not for its own sake 
but because she was painting something and trying to be authentic to herself and trying to be authentic to Freemasonry at the same time. When I did my Entered Apprentice degree um, and Entered Apprentice paper, I created a floor cloth that I erased and drew five times because that's how many times I went to state of meeting up to um, when my paper was due. It really solidified all the lessons I learned in my proficiency. Masonic imagery has enriched my life um, by looking at the world around me in a different light. We can see Masonic symbolism incorporated in different buildings and public works and that teaches us the same things that we're learning now when we look at a tracing board or a floor cloth today. Um, we can also look at different cultures and um, even 2,000 years ago and they would use the same symbolism as we're using now to help people back then in the same way we're helping people now. The symbols, stories, and lessons of Freemasonry come to life in its art. These visual aids are at once artifacts, teaching tools, and works of art. They mark a Mason's mind and his memory. They appeal to his sense of beauty and his pursuit of knowledge. In the tracing boards and floor cloths of old, in the slides and videos of today, art and education exist side by side. They are portals into the education of the heart, where language fades and understanding springs forth. <laughs>